My name is Eloise Cupido. Welcome to the series on investigating geometry. Hi everyone. Hi guys. Many people think that there's only one right way to do things in geometry. If that's what you think, you're in for a surprise. We will show you that there's more than one way to define a shape, several ways to go about proving things about shapes, and at least three ways to write down a proof. Here are some shapes you've probably seen before. Parallelograms, rhombuses, rectangles, squares, trapeziums and kites. I notice that you've got a whole pile of different cut-out quadrilaterals in front of you. These shapes are all different from each other. But do you know what they have in common? They're all closed shapes with four sides. Yes, and aren't they called quadrilaterals? Right. They belong to the family of quadrilaterals. By calling them all quadrilaterals, we say that we've grouped or classified them. Notice how a triangle or a pentagon won't fit into this group because they have the wrong number of sides. In this lesson, we will look at this family of quadrilaterals and identify what is common and what is different about each different type of quadrilateral. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to classify quadrilaterals in different ways, giving reasons for each classification. We've already seen that these all belong to the family of quadrilaterals. And no matter what size or shape they are, they are all closed, four-sided quadrilaterals. What we want to do now is to find a way to sort them into smaller groups. Can you two help us out? I know. We can sort them into piles of shapes that we already know. I'll do the squares, rectangles and parallelograms. All right. Then I will do the kites, the trapeziums and the rhombuses. What are these shapes left over? Those are quadrilaterals that don't have any other special properties besides having four sides. Okay, so now you've sorted the quadrilaterals into piles of shapes you already know about. You should have a pile of parallelograms, squares, rectangles, rhombuses, trapeziums and kites. Let's look at each type of shape and compare it to the others. Starting with the rectangle and the parallelogram. What does the rectangle have that is the same as the parallelogram? Oh, they both have opposite sides that are parallel. And both opposite sides are equal and the opposite angles are equal. Good. Now tell me, how is the rectangle different from a parallelogram? That's easy. A rectangle has its angles equal to 90 degrees. And its diagonals are also equal. But in a parallelogram, one diagonal is longer than the other. Right again. But for now, it's enough just to focus on the number of equal sides, the number of parallel sides and the number of equal angles. So we could describe a rectangle as a special type of parallelogram that has all its angles equal. Let me show you how we could represent this in a diagram. Within the family of quadrilaterals, there's a smaller group of parallelograms. And within that group of parallelograms, there is an even smaller group of rectangles. Right, 
Now that we've started things off, let's see if you can find a way to put all the other quadrilaterals into a diagram like this. Remember, we started off with the ordinary quadrilaterals as the biggest group. Those are the ones that have no equal or parallel sides. Okay, Gerard, let's use our big pieces of card for our diagrams. Cool. Let's get started. Just a little tip before you get started. Think about the number of equal sides and angles each shape has. And don't forget the number of parallel sides each shape has. I think I'll start by looking at the sides. A square has four equal sides, and so does a rhombus. So I think I'll put them next to each other. Next, I'll do the rectangle, which has two pair of opposite equal sides. Over here and over here. Hey, a parallelogram also has two pairs of opposite sides equal. And a kite. A kite also has two pairs of equal sides. Over here and over here. Hmm. That's all the quads. So, what shapes are left? Trapeziums. Right. Some of them have one pair of equal sides. So I'll put this one here. But others don't have any equal sides. So I guess I'll put them with the quadrilaterals. Your groupings are looking good, Gerard. By the way, there's a name for the special trapezium you found. It's called an isosceles trapezium. I wondered about that. Now, how would you link these groups in your diagrams? Where would you put the arrows to show the links between them? I'm going to start with an ordinary quadrilateral. A trapezium is also a type of quadrilateral, seeing as it has no equal sides. So I think I'll put it in a smaller group. The only difference is that a trapezium has one pair of parallel sides. Then, under that, I'm going to add an isosceles trapezium. It's the same like a normal trapezium, except it has a pair of sides that are equal. It belongs to a smaller group within the trapeziums. So are you using shapes with equal sides as the basis to link up your diagram? Yes, and I'm using those shapes and putting them in smaller groups if they have properties that are a little bit different. So let's see what I've got left. These groups have two pairs of equal sides. And these groups have four equal sides. So let's go to the quadrilaterals that have two pairs of equal sides. Hmm, I've got a parallelogram a kite, and a rectangle. I think I'm going to move the kite over here because it doesn't have opposite equal sides. And I'm going to put the rectangle under the parallelogram. Why are you arranging them that way around? Well, although they both have opposite equal sides, the rectangle has something extra. All its angles are equal as well. Great! Now you're left with shapes that have four equal sides. Right. I've decided that a rhombus is a special type of kite. Because if you take its two adjacent equal sides and make them all equal, you get a rhombus. Some of you might disagree with this, but Gerard is correct according to the way his system has been set up. In his system, there's nothing to stop him from seeing a rhombus as a special type of kite. Because all the sides are equal in a rhombus, that means it must have adjacent equal sides like the kite. So a rhombus could be called a special kind of kite. Okay, Gerard, carry on. Right, now I'm going to link my square to these two groups. You see, I see my square as a special type of rectangle with all its sides equal, and a special type of rhombus with its angles equal. Great stuff, Gerard. We'll come back to your diagram a bit later on. 
Sigra, how are you doing with your classification? As you can see, I've finished my system, thanks to Gerard, who gave me a few tips. See, now I started off by focusing on the number of parallel lines in the quadrilateral. The ordinary quadrilateral has no parallel lines. The kite also has no parallel lines, but it does have adjacent equal sides, so I put it over here. The trapezium has one pair of parallel lines, and the parallelogram has two pairs of opposite parallel sides, so I joined the two with an arrow like this. Hey, that's so cool. Are you saying a parallelogram is like a special type of trapezium? I would never have thought of that. Well done, Sigra. Using the parallel lines property as your main way of sorting shapes means you can say a parallelogram is a kind of trapezium. Now, what about the rest of your diagram? After that, everything just fell into place. The rectangle, the rhombus and the square all have two pairs of parallel lines. So I put the rectangle here as a special kind of parallelogram with equal angles that are all 90 degrees. Then I put the rhombus here as a parallelogram that also has four equal sides. And finally, I did the same as Gerard. I made the square a special kind of a rhombus and a rectangle. Well done. You have given us two different systems of classification that both work. Gerard, let's quickly go back to your system. You use the number of equal sides in a shape as your way of sorting them into groups. Then, within the bigger groups, you looked for other differences between shapes. Some had equal angles and some had parallel lines. And with your system, you could make some interesting statements about shapes. You said a square is a type of rhombus as well as a type of rectangle. You also said that a rectangle is a type of parallelogram. And we saw that your structure makes a rhombus a type of kite. This raises some questions about what a kite is, but we'll investigate that in another lesson. Sigra, in your system, you use the number of parallel lines in a shape to determine where you put your groups and how you linked them to each other. This meant you could say a rhombus, a rectangle and a square are all types of parallelograms. And a parallelogram is, in turn, a type of trapezium. Classifying a square, a rectangle, a rhombus and a parallelogram all as trapeziums are quite unexpected. But the logic you used was correct. In a later lesson we will see that the way we define a trapezium will determine whether we accept a parallelogram as a type of trapezium or not. As your task for today, find your own way to classify the six types of quadrilaterals and show your system in a diagram. Use your diagram to describe your system to the class and explain your reasoning. You should all discuss each other's classification systems and see if they make sense. You don't need to reach agreement on any one way to classify quadrilaterals, but you need to be able to explain your reasoning for the way you have linked the groups together. Well, that's it for today.